Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going through my quarter two empties. They are all in this bag. I feel like going through them all individually, especially if I've got nothing really to say about them, is a bit boring for you guys. So what I'm going to do is split them into categories. So we'll look at them as my hair care, perfume, skincare and makeup empties and I'll talk about the totals and the totals at the end. In terms of the totals to start with, in quarter one I used 54 items worth $891.92. Definitely on track to do reverse rouge which I was hoping to achieve this year anyway but my main goal this year is to use up 300 items so ideally I would have liked to have been using up 75 per quarter so I was a little bit short of that last quarter so to try and get that back on track this quarter I'm hoping to use up 96 items I'm not sure if there's going to be 96 items in this bag but let's get into it and find out <laughs> I'll look at perfume first because it's probably the smallest category. So I've used up a quantity of nine items from my perfume inventory and they are worth $227.30. As I said, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. The ones here that I would repurchase, now I'll probably absolutely butcher this, but the Guerlain Cui Beluga, I think, could be so wrong in how I'm pronouncing that, but regardless of the pronunciation, it is such a beautiful perfume. I actually have the full size of this and I definitely would repurchase the full size as soon as I'm done with this one. It's So it translates as white leather but it's not leather in a sort of cowboy type of leather like a Tom Ford leather. It's a really sort of creamy, smooth sort of like I feel like I know what they're saying when they say white leather but I feel like white leather <laughs> has not great connotations in my head. Um, I, I feel like I'm I'm viewing, you know, nasty looking car interiors and things, but yeah, like a really sort of creamy, smooth, almost velvety sort of leather. It's, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. It's like white leather glove, I suppose, like a vintage ladies debutante's white leather glove. I think they wore cotton gloves, but you know, that aside, it's that vibe. Um, it's still got a bit of substance to it, you know, and it's not a floral sort of super sweet perfume, but it is quite a sweet perfume. Um, but yeah, really, really lovely one. Just to take a note on this, so this is obviously a Penhaligon's Atomizer. So this was full of Halfetti leather, which I enjoyed, but I feel like having used up the 5ml that was in the Atomizer, you know, I, I probably wouldn't rush to go and purchase it. I enjoyed it while I had it and if somebody bought me it again, I would enjoy using it, but I don't know if I'd rush to actually purchase it with my own money. But I will obviously be keeping the atomizer and I will wash it out and refill it with something else. So don't worry, this is not going into the bin. I mean, this is so well known, it feels ridiculous for me to even discuss it, but Chanel Coco, this is such a beautiful perfume. If you're looking, I feel ridiculous saying if you're looking for a really grown up perfume when I've got um, Lion King nails on at the moment. Uh, there's Zazu doing his thing. Such a beautiful scent. It's a really really nice one for Christmas. It's really rich. It's kind of got spices through it. It's a sort of dark amber colour when you see it. Obviously when the bottle's full when you see the juice in it and I feel like it, it smells like the colour it is. It's just absolutely stunning but definitely not for the faint-hearted. But I definitely would like to repurchase that once I've used up some other stuff. And then the last thing that I would take out of this group would be this one. So this was from Mona Diorio and obviously this was just a little sample that I got from Lace and Tours and the perfume was Suede de Suede. Again, quite similar to this, like yes, it's leather, but it's leather in quite a smooth, creamy, almost sweet kind of way. This one's slightly less so than the Guerlain, but yeah, really, really lovely leather smell without being sort of sweaty saddle leather if that there's a time and a place for that obviously I'm not against that but like it's it's that sort of smooth almost velvety leather so another really good one if you like those kind of smells. On to makeup I have used a total of 13 products six of them count as sashi samples in terms of how I've done them on my inventory and those products are these two obviously which are very obviously sashi samples um, but then I counted 
each of these blister packs is one as well, so four blister packs plus two actual sachets. And my makeup empties are worth $134.33. Nothing I hated here, but nothing other than one thing that I particularly would, you know, want to talk about. And I feel like any of you who follow me on Instagram are probably like, shut up about this mascara, but this was the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. If you're somebody who smudges mascara, like this is a game changer. So I used to always use normal mascara and then lock it down with a tubing mascara. I had actually, I'd become so accustomed to that that I'd forgotten how much of a faff it was. And then I didn't have to do that with this mascara. It's one of those things, I didn't think it was a problem when I was doing it and then when I stopped having to do it, I was like, this is just so much simpler. And since I've eventually had to say, this one has had its life and it's finished and it's not performing anymore. And I've gone back to it like, you know, and I, if any day that I forget to use my tubing mascara, I've got panda eyes within seconds. So this will definitely be back in my life. It's more of a lengthening mascara, I would say, than a volumizing one. I really like that. I like kind of long, sort of defined lashes that looks like there's a lot of them rather than like a mascara that clumps them together to give it volume. Um, so yeah, absolutely loved this and it did not budge on me and I will 100% be repurchasing it. I think if you're somebody who doesn't smudge mascara, this isn't great for you because my friend Lauren had it as well. We both got it in a goodie bag and she found it really, really flaky and sort of dry on her. Whereas obviously I am super oily and I usually smudge mascara so there must be more moisture there to start with, which this formula worked so well with because it didn't move. Um, but yeah, it's maybe not one for you if you're not a smudger, um, you know, if you're at the other end of the scale, but if you're a smudger, this is amazing, in my humble opinion. So between perfume and makeup, I have used up so far a total of $361.63 worth of product. That is across 22 products, so that is 22 towards my goal. So let's move on and see how much hair care I've used up. So moving on to hair care, I used up 11 items of hair care and they were worth $100.44. I feel like I don't know that I've got that much to say, basically. So lovely Karen left me such a lovely comment on my last video saying that she thought my hair looked as if I'd had it freshly done, um, which was so, so very, very nice of you. Um, but my hair has not been freshly done. It's actually pretty overdue being done. However, if you have been sort of checking in with my budget videos, you'll know I stopped getting my hair professionally coloured and um, basically just kind of when COVID kicked in, I sort of was using the at-home dyes and was a bit like, I could save so much money here. Um, so there are two dyes there and this is the one um, that I've been kind of sticking with. So they've changed the packaging in this recently, but it's the same one that I've been using for quite a while now. Um, so it used to be called... Santa Monica but now it's just called copper or the other way about whichever it is. I don't know that there's anything wrong with the dye I'm not saying that but I feel like my hair recently has not been in the best condition and my hair's usually in pretty good condition like I've got quite strong hair generally. I've not dyed it for a little while and so as you can see in the last three months I've only used one actual dye and one root dye. Desperately needing none, but I've been kind of trying to put it off just to give my hair a bit of a break. I have been using a smaller curling iron as well, so I'm not sure if it's if it's just the build-up of home dyeing or if it's that in conjunction with the smaller curling iron, which is probably more heat on my hair, or if it's just the heat kind of thing. I'm not 100% sure, but it's not been feeling its best which I think you can kind of see in the products that I've been using up here. So Olaplex number zero, and then that is Olaplex number three that I've used there. Then I've also used up this, I think this is essentially Bumble and Bumble sort of answer to Olaplex. It's their bond building repair treatment. And then I've also used this one from Amika called The Cure, which is their intense bond repair mask. Um, and then those three sashes up there are hair oils. I feel like I can't really comment because I'm not sure that my hair feels any different, but I feel like because these are all sort of strengthening products, they're not designed to make your hair feel super nourished, if that makes sense. Like they're designed to actually be strengthening your hair. And I don't know if, 
you would really feel a difference with that or if you would just see that it's a bit less breaky. It's, it's kind of one of those ones, like that was a one use one, I think I got two uses out of that because I've got quite long hair so I use quite a lot of product in one go. Like I sort of finished these off in the last month or so but I had used maybe three quarters of it so I don't know, I'm not saying they don't work but I'm not saying I've seen any massive change but I did, I was looking at uh, the Beauty Pie website and I was looking at their sort of equivalent of this and they do make the point of saying on their website this is not a nourishing product, it's a strengthening product so your hair isn't necessarily going to feel um, you know super sort of nourished or whatever but yeah you can kind of see the pattern of what I've been using here is slightly less hair dye, more strengthening products, oil, curl hold spray, heat protect spray, kind of generic uh, and then the Southern Bell uh, conditioner from Dry Bar, which I very much liked. I enjoyed the smell of this. Yeah, I would kind of repurchase any of this again. I have no complaints about any of it, but I also don't know if I can turn around and say this is the best stuff I've ever used and I'd really highly recommend it. So yeah, that's my kind of very useless two cents is to say I'm kind of indifferent to all of this, but I'm sort of aware that my hair is a bit fragile at the moment. So you probably will see more of this kind of stuff in my empties in the near future. Anyway, adding on my hair brings me to a total value of empty so far of $462.07. So a total quantity of 33 items used. I think I said at the start my goal was 96, so I would need to have 66 items of skincare there to hit my goal. What do we think? Let's find out. So here are all my skincare empties. I've counted them up. And I've not quite done it, but I have used up 49 of them. So that brings my total of quantities of empties for quarter two to a total of 82. So I'm short by 14. So I feel like I'm going to be doing like a lot of sheet masks and, you know, a lot of one-use products to try and make up the deficit. Um, because I do want to obviously try and make up the deficit rather than falling further and further behind. But 82 is not too bad. And, you know, if I hadn't had a deficit... In the first quarter, 82 is actually over the 75 that I would have been aiming for each quarter, so I feel like we're moving in the right way. My skincare empties are worth $1,146.55, which brings my total worth of empties for quarter two to $1,608.62. Moving on to the actual skincare, um, things that I really like that I would definitely repurchase I've talked about these before, the Patchology Illuminating Sheet Masks. I feel like generally sheet masks are just kind of hydrating and whatever, but I feel like with these ones, I really do see like a big difference in the sort of illumination of my skin. I feel like they actually do what they say on the tin, um, and I really, really like them. I've been through a few of these, and I would definitely like to have this back in my life. Right next to it, we have from Zellens, their PHA Plus Bio Peel Resurfacing Facial Pads. I saw such a difference in the congestion of my skin when I was using these. I really, really like them. I think they're worth something silly like $92. I got them as a free gift. I think it was um, either Cult Beauty or Look Fantastic or something. I got them as a gift with purchase, so I didn't actually pay for them, but I definitely would pay for them once I've used up kind of equivalent products in my inventory. Another thing I would really like to repurchase is this Biosans Squalene and Peptide Eye Gel. As you can tell from the fact it's an eye gel, it was just a really, really lightweight um, sort of serum texture that absorbed in really, really quickly. Something I really like that I wish I had in um, the Augustinus Bader, the Rich Cream. So this was like a 7ml sample and I feel like usually I'd be like, oh, you can't really tell much other than, you know, if you're allergic or whatever. But I swear the week that I was using this, my skin was like the best it's ever been. And as soon as I stopped using it, it was just, I couldn't even put my finger on what was better about it. But it was just better when I was using this and then when I stopped using this it just wasn't quite as good. I have never seen a product make that much difference like a moisturiser in a week from a sample. It's 11 billion pounds like I'm probably never going to actually spend my own money on it but if I had a windfall and I had to had to spend it this would definitely be a contender for a bougie product that I would potentially buy because it definitely 
definitely made a difference. A bougie product I probably wouldn't buy again would be this one from Sizzly, the Express Flower Gel Hydration Mask. It was good but I just don't know if it was worth the money. I really love the Black Rose Mask. I have repurchased that a few times now actually and again I see a real difference when I use that just like that Gustin & Spader product um, but I feel like it's not a moisturiser, it's a mask so you're not going to go through it quite as quickly as you will a moisturiser so I feel like I'm maybe more more likely to actually spend on a mask that I'm only going to use um, you know, or well not only kind of once a month or whatever but slightly, you know, not an everyday product that I'm going to go through really really quickly basically um, so the Black Rose one, worth every penny in my opinion but this one, like, really really nice wouldn't put anybody who has the disposable income for it off buying it but I don't think I'll be repurchasing that one this actually from Neom, it's a shower gel again so this is this was a 50ml, I think it was a gift with purchase um, I actually ended up, I purchased the full size of this because I've basically finished I've got one mini in my shower at the moment, one mini shower gel and that's me out. So this is what I've actually purchased the full size of. If you like a sort of minty shower gel, it's that, but it's more of a cream than a gel so it feels really quite hydrating, but it's not super thick, it's still quite lightweight, but really good if you want to like, you know, shave your legs or whatever. It's got a bit of sort of, bit of substance to it, but without being overwhelming or feeling sticky or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of minty wash, so like I love the Seal Bigelow um, mint shower gel and the Lush one, I think it's called Dirty, um, the blue one from Lush that's like super minty as well, so if you like those kind of shower gels, this could be worth checking out. I've got two serums I'm not going to repurchase, so the first is this one from Drunk Elephant. This was actually a repurchase, but this was my first one since they changed to doing it so that you mix it yourself when you buy it. Um, and I just didn't feel that I liked the texture as much. I didn't kind of feel like it, I felt like it was really watery and it's probably a mental thing, but I just kind of felt like it wasn't doing as much for my skin. Um, but then on the other side of that, I also noticed when I stopped using this that my skin seemed to get a bit more clarity to it. It was almost like this was kind of dyeing my skin a bit orange, like my skin had an almost sort of jaundiced look to it by the end of using this, which I hadn't noticed with the, the old formula that came pre-mixed, so I don't know if it's, if I just hadn't noticed it with the old one or maybe because I went from the old one straight into this one, maybe it was overusing the two that it kind of built up, I don't know, but either way I'm not going to repurchase this now because I didn't really like the new version quite as much. I did actually get this which I may, may purchase um, as my day serum, it's the Murad Rapid Dark Spot Correcting Serum. I feel like I really liked this and thought it was really brightening, however I will kind of say on the flip side of that this is what I started using just after I finished that, so I feel like maybe it was a combination of the orangeness caused by that was dissipating anyway um, in combination with this, but I did feel that I quite liked this. That's a potential repurchase, but anyway, the other serum I'm not going to repurchase is this one. So this is the L'Oreal Midnight Serum. It's obviously very much clearly supposed to be their answer to Estee Lauder's Advanced Night Recovery. I didn't feel this was quite as effective on the skin as the Estee Lauder version, but I could have kind of made my peace with that in terms of this being obviously more affordable but the packaging of this it's like a pipette packaging and the serum itself is really sort of thick and um, it's just especially towards the end when I was trying to get the, the last of it out it's so it's just not the right packaging in the slightest and my friend started using it as well and she said exactly the same thing it's not the right packaging kind of don't know how it wasn't picked up in testing that the packaging is completely ridiculous for this and um, it's just not suitable at all so the packaging more than the actual product is why I will not be repurchasing that. I have repurchased both of these serums so my Kiehl's Hydro Plumping Serum Concentrate so I feel like that there are more affordable hydrating serums but I feel like this just does more for my skin it really does seem to sort of plump up and make it look smoother as well as hydrating it so I have repurchased that and for my nighttime vitamin C, I have also repurchased the Kiehl's Powerful Strength Line Reducing Concentrate. I feel like this is kind of, like I see good results with it and it's not a cheap product, but it's not a sort of super looks product either in terms of the price point. I feel like it's it's quite a fair price point. And the thing about Kiehl's, like they never used to do offers, but if you sign up for Kiehl's own in-house emails at the moment, it's, I feel like I get an offer every other month kind of thing. So 
um, there are ways to get offers with it. It's, I think because now they're stocked in Boots and Space NK, places that you can get points and discounts and whatever, they've sort of had to combat that in-house. So um, they are very much doing that. So yeah, I would uh, I would recommend signing up signing up to their emails and you know they have their own rewards program and loads of offers and stuff. So I feel like Kiehl's is kind of a a fair price point really for a sort of more advanced skincare product but without being kind of through the roof but yeah I think that's that's the only ones I sort of had anything of note to say on just casting an eye over the rest of it nothing else is jumping out so if there is something that you see that you want any more information on please let me know like I'm obviously happy to answer any questions but I feel like me going through everything for the sheer sake of going through it is probably not that interesting if I don't have anything specific to say so I hope this has been a bit more of a more of an interesting way to do empties. Uh, thank you very much for watching them and I will see you in my next video. Bye!